So here we go. Ready, set, go. Okay, I am, uh, Chauncey was broad. I'm going to be focused and targeted. I'm talking about wine pairing user experience in the five minutes I have. So why am I doing this? Well, I was excited when Chauncey suggested this topic because it's a chance to combine three of my obsessions, uh, food, wine, and user experience. And uh, as Chauncey mentioned, I have a lot of wine, I have a lot of cookbooks. I've been doing this a long time. <laughs> and what I'm gonna gallop through is the, U the UX challenge of choosing wine for a restaurant meal, including whether to accept the restaurant's suggestions of wine pairings, and I'm also gonna show you some examples of wine lists and how I'd choose from them, okay? So that we're gonna try to accomplish this and we'll see what happens. Um, what, this is a little corner of my wine cellar so that you can see that when I'm looking at wine lists, I probably do know a little bit about what's in them, so I, I have kind of a, an edge on, but you don't need it. I'm going to talk about how you don't need it. And we also have a lot of cookbooks. My, my bookshelves are slightly less messy than my wine cellar. So the questions I ask myself when I face a restaurant wine list are basically, how much wine do we expect to drink? And what will control the type of wine? So what this becomes is an integration of people's general preferences and people's specific food choices. So if you look at food choices, you can look, you're looking at a continuum, perhaps, of some people that are having very light poached fish and other people are having heavy red meat with sauce. And somehow, you have to figure out wine for everybody. And these are some of the things that I have been reading over the years to, uh, to get there. So many restaurants today offer specific wine pairings, especially when they have a set special menu. So should you opt for them? In the ideal world, the chef and the sommelier have worked together to choose suitable wines for each course, and that's a good idea, but they are not the target audience. The recommended pairings may not fit what you know about your user group. You do have other choices. You can look at their wine list. Now, a wine list, especially a large one, can be pretty overwhelming. Uh, just as you, but just as you don't test every feature of a product, the methodology is to focus on a few key candidates by region, by winery, by bottle age, by price. And that way you can kind of narrow what you're at. So I talked about looking for known wines. Well, there, there are some of my known wines. Okay, giving myself a little space to, to catch up here. The next thing we're going to look at is a wine list. Okay, now the red circles on the wine list are the ones that I wouldn't choose, and the green circles are the ones I would choose. So although the Cote de Bone area, the first one, is one I particularly like, the Hospice de Cote de Bone are, are, are auctioned wines, so they always cost 10% more than they ought to. And, uh, whoops, well, okay, it's got ahead of me. Somebody can ask me later. Okay, what about wines you're not familiar with? A restaurant meal can be a fine time to experiment if you feel comfortable with the context. And so those are the questions to ask to decide whether you want to experiment. This is some issues of experimenting. These are all wines I know. The, the top four are wines I know and trust. I would choose them for business dinner, okay? Some at lower cost, some at higher cost. The bottom one is the one that I would try dining with good friends because I like Amador Zins and this was an Amador Barbera. Okay. Now we're getting to the end of the five minutes, so we're also getting to the end of the meal, and there are also dessert wines. So they can be excellent value, especially when you compare them to things like cognacs, but they're often not drunk in, oops, okay. So you don't have to go necessarily with the most expensive one, but it's risky to go with the cheapest one, and in dessert wines, half bottles work really well unless you have a large party. Someday I would love to try that 983 Sauterne, though. Okay, How, what, what are we gonna do about, about advice? Suppose you don't order a lot of wine in restaurants. Should you ask for advice? Well, sure, but don't feel required to accept it. Uh, one of the things I sometimes do is ask the sommelier about what they think of a wine on the list that I have already tasted, or at least that I know something about. And then I use that answer to calibrate how much I should follow their advice. <laughs> so, you know, it's fine to ask, but you don't have to. Go, you don't have to go with something just because they recommended it. Okay, this is just a potpourri of what I didn't put on the other slides and thought I wouldn't have time for. So this is a, a few last things. Uh, you know, don't be, feel constrained by white, red wine, meat, white wine, fish. The, the thing about don't choose the cheapest wine in the list, probably true. Um, well, we can go back to it. Uh, 
Now, I said I can't say any questions now because I thought this was all going to be gallop along, but it looks like we do have a tiny chance for questions. Pardon? We have time for two questions. And I'm, not go I'm, I'm going to be here. <laughs>